Hello and thank you for joining in on this tutorial. This is for all the teachers who have asked for help showing their students how to draw chicken coops so that they can then go away and design their own chicken coop designs. Start off by thinking about the overall shape that you'd like to base it on. This design uses a cube and sitting on top of that is a pyramid. This design is based on rectangular prisms. You can see where I've started both of those shapes. Rectangular prism with a wedge on top. This design uses a cone and a cylinder. They're easily generated by using the ellipses on the top of the splat. So there's my cylinder. And this design is using lots of spheres that have joined together. The climate will affect a design as well. A tropical coop will need lots of airflow to keep the chooks cool. Temperate is in between hot and cold climates. In our first drawing today, let's use a design based on a cube. We'll draw one cube, slide, and the second cube. The first cube is called the chicken run. It's covered in either chicken wire or mesh. We need a starting point. A cube is drawn in three steps. One is to trace around the outside and that vertical or center splat. Step two, slide upwards and draw those two lines. And lastly, for the far edges, rotate, line it up with those two corners. Bang, bang. Great. Now we're going to slide the splat in that direction to add another cube. Let's go back to the original position and slide it along there. And that's your new starting point right there. So here we go. We only need to draw two lines because the others are hidden by the cube in front. Step two, slide up. Only one to draw there. Next step, we're going to rotate. I'm lining up the edge and the corner. And there's our two cubes. Next, you're going to want to grab a straight edge or a rule. And we're going to copy each of those lines and change it from a single line into what looks like some tubing. There's the right splat lines. Now the vertical. Vertical means straight up and down. If this is actually see-through, then I'm missing some lines. So if I can see through the wire, I would see a line there and there. That represents the front of the wooden box, the second cube. To show you what I mean, let's add a doorway with two vertical and a right splat line. Make it look like a sheet of timber by copying a second one there. Here's how you draw a roost. Pick a spot and draw a circle. Now, what angle does it go across on? It will be the splat angle. So line the circle up with the end and draw all the way to the end of the splat. Copy a second line. And then at the end, fill it in with a half circle. There's your roost. Looks like it's floating in air, but it's not. Um, it would actually be held onto the wire with a screw at each end. I'm going to erase there and draw a chicken on top. Try this one. A simple rectangle, add a beak and an eye, a crest on top, and then tail feathers of whatever shape you like. Add a wing, a foot, and there's your chook on a perch. Awesome. Here's the last line to draw in. This is the frame. Line up the splat, slide and draw. Now it can look confusing with all of the lines seeming to head towards the middle. So I'm going to draw in an object like this feeder. You can see how it hides and makes it look more 3D. Let's have a go at a different shape using a small ellipse. Trace one, slide down, half an ellipse, join the sides. Now I've got a feeding dish. And here's why overlapping works so well. Those bars in front really look like they're sitting in coming towards you now. 
Here I'm adding a bit of wood grain to make this look like a sheet of plywood. Try not to make your lines all the same distance apart or it looks like a zebra stripes. So we add some knots here and there and kind of go wavy. Really good. Imagine you're looking from the end and we've got a flat sloping roof. It's called a skillion. Here's how you'd put it on your drawing. From that point come up, say two centimeters. I'm missing that point, I've rubbed it out, so I'll just lightly redraw that one in. And I'll come up two centimeters there as well. When you join the top, it should be on your splat angle. Let's just check that. Yep, spot on. Now it's a case of finding that point and joining it to that point. Use a rule, I'm using the edge of the splat and I'm hopping over the blip there so it doesn't leave a wavy line. And again. Now I'm going to extend those lines. Extend means make the line longer in the same direction. And the ends of those lines I'm now joining. They'll also be on the splat angle. Erase my lines. Do a little fix up. I'd probably draw the whole thing in light lines and when I'm really sure of the shape that I need, that's when I'd firm the lines in. Doing some lighter lines makes it look like a corrugated iron roof. That's the wavy metal roof. And some little screws to hold it down. Probably a bit few too many screws on there. Choose a color. Now I'm bringing up uh, some more detail to make it look like big waves. It's called corrugated iron roofing. And those lines make the valleys look a little bit more obvious. Brown pencil. Go over your grain and I'm bringing up the outline there. This piece is also made from plywood so let's apply the same treatment. A little bit of wood grain and a bit of shading. What I'm doing is adding a darker brown. It looks like a shadow underneath the roof where it overhangs a little bit and really helps it pop to look a bit more 3D. Let's make the perch also look timber and here's the side I forgot to shade I'm looking through the cage so I'll make it a little bit lighter I'm coming near the end of my drawing so I'm tidying up my outlines now using a ruler long lines like that are best done with a ruler as well sometimes um, hand done makes them look a little bit shaky and I'm putting a little bit of detail in the bottom to suggest that this is grass we don't need to put grass all over a little bit here and there Use the shadow drop down a little bit and that makes it look like the feeder is hanging up in the air. Let's complete that with a piece of wire holding it onto the perch. Let's neaten up our outline. And we are there. Thanks so much for joining in. Now it's over to you. Once you can draw a cube, you can draw anything. The trick is practice. I guarantee your second one will look better than your first drawing. Have fun. Bye.